kanji, the most intimidating part of learning Japanese. For most Japanese learners, memorizing thousands of kanji seems like an impossible feat, and many consider it the hardest aspect of learning the language. Today, we're going to go over an entirely new way to learn kanji that we feel is definitely the best way to go about learning them, and that greatly improves upon all of the downsides found in other kanji learning methods. First, we are going to introduce you to our new kanji learning methodology, then we will introduce you to our brand new project that makes learning kanji in this way possible. The method and software are perfect for beginners as well as those who are already somewhere along their kanji learning journey. So stick around to see how you can start using it today. Before we explain to you what our kanji learning strategy is, we feel that we should give it a name to better distinguish it from other kanji learning methods. For lack of a better word, we decided to call our kanji learning strategy the Migaku method. But what is the Migaku method? And why can we say with confidence that it greatly improves upon all other existing kanji learning methods? Well, let's begin by explaining a little bit about what kanji are, how to think about them and the current kanji learning space. Then we will continue by explaining how the Migaku method greatly improves upon existing methods. We want to explain this to you guys from the perspective of someone who's just decided to learn Japanese and doesn't have any idea of where to begin. Kanji are the third, perhaps the most important, but certainly an essential part of the Japanese script. A kanji, which is often referred to as a character, is made up of component pieces. Within a single kanji, there can be one or more components which make up that given character. There are various ways to refer to these component pieces, two others being as radicals, primitives. And while these three words have slightly different meanings to each other, they all capture the spirit of the kanji writing system and that's that you can take several component pieces and use them together to create an entirely new kanji. The new kanji that you create oftentimes retains a relationship with its component pieces. For example, they may share the meaning or pronunciation of some or all of their components, or may even form a compound meaning that is a combination of the meanings of the components it's created from. Now, this doesn't always hold true, and oftentimes it can be quite difficult to form straightforward connections of a kanji's meaning and pronunciation to the meaning or pronunciation of any of its given pieces. But what's important important to remember is that kanji are sort of like lego blocks or a puzzle. And while to a beginner a kanji may look like a random series of lines and strokes, it's actually a single component in a web of connected characters that make up the kanji writing system. And with a consistent effort and an effective strategy, it won't be long before you will effortlessly be able to see kanji for what it really is. But how do we actually go about remembering how to recognize or write a certain kanji? Well, remember how kanji are made up of different components and how each of those components themselves have a unique keyword? We can use this to our advantage. This connection between kanji and their components can seem pretty loose at first, but there's a proven strategy that can help you to connect them together in a way that makes remembering them much easier. We do this by giving each kanji an accompanying mnemonic story that ties the kanji's keyword and the keyword of all its component pieces together into one cohesive whole. This will make the act of simply glancing at or writing a character into the act of remembering a story that involves familiar reoccurring parts from elsewhere in your kanji learning journey. As an example, we can look at the kanji for parent. This doesn't resemble a parent at all, but before you reach this point, you will have memorized that this part is called stand, and this part is called tree, and this part is called sea, and this is where mnemonics shine. All parts of this kanji have a name now, and with this you can create a story that helps you to remember the keyword for it. Here the story could be, you can easily spot a parent as they are standing on trees so they can see their kids. Remembering these connections in the long term, however, can be quite challenging. But the community has also found pretty good solutions to this problem and that's to use a spaced repetition system. A type of flashcard software that keeps track of the last time you've seen a given kanji and the next time you should review it again to keep yourself from forgetting the knowledge you've learned. In an ideal system, this means that you will review the kanji, which is the act of testing your ability to recognize or write the kanji you've learned just before you are going to forget them. This means that you review each kanji at an ever-growing interval. For example, you will learn the kanji one day, then review it again the next day. Then again, three days after that, then again, seven days later, then again, 18 days later, and so on. The Spaced Repetition System or SRS software that we currently recommend is Anki. So if you haven't heard of it, please check out our Anki guide on our website that goes into detail what Anki is 
and how to go about using it to not only help you to learn Kanji, but also to learn your target language as a whole. We also plan to develop our own Mikako SRS flashcard program, which will greatly improve upon Anki's biggest weaknesses. Until then, you can use many of our add-ons to help you to negate some of those shortcomings. Up until now, we've only said good things about the currently recommended strategies. But as you probably know, <laughs> every method has its faults and areas where they can be improved upon. And in this case, we feel that there are many areas in which the previously laid out learning strategy can be improved. So let's briefly go over the pitfalls that the buff strategy has. We tend to forget the kanji we've learned. A phenomenon that we've seen in many learners who followed the previously mentioned learning strategy is that as the intervals between their SRS reviews grow, their ability to accurately recall keywords or kanji greatly diminishes. We've often seen retention rates drop from 85-90% to at a 3 months interval point to between 60-70% and or even less at and above the 6 month interval mark. What seems to happen is that even kanji that a learner is regularly seeing during immersion and input will be failed because of a learner's lack of ability to recall a specific keyword or lack of ability to write the kanji. We strongly believe that this is because as we become more and more familiar with kanji, we begin to only connect it with the context in which we are seeing it used during input and disconnect it from the keywords that we introduced ourselves to kanji with. So it becomes more and more difficult to recall a kanji's keyword, which means that even if you would be able to recognize or write that kanji easily in the context of the words you've learned that use it, that you will be unable to correctly answer your flashcards when only prompted by the kanji or the keyword alone. We will talk more about how the Migaku method solves this problem in the next section. We spend too much time on the kanji that are almost never used. As we talked about earlier, a major benefit of learning the simple components of a kanji before learning that kanji is that it creates a sort of step leather to slowly increase our kanji knowledge. However, this methodology is also accompanied by a front-loading period in which you study many hundred kanji which are very rarely used and should not at all be focused on during the beginning of your studies. It's simply a waste of time to study characters that will rarely be seen and thus are very likely to be forgotten. That time is better spent getting familiar with the Japanese language. People lose their passion for Japanese. Perhaps the biggest pitfall of all is that while you are studying kanji in that way, you are actually postponing your study of the living, breathing Japanese language. There have been a huge number of people who have given up on their studies during the kanji phase because they saw it as a prerequisite to continue their Japanese studies, yet felt that the kanji study itself actually alienated them from their interest in the Japanese language itself, since simply memorizing keyword and kanji combinations is pretty far removed from the act of studying, immersing in and beginning to understand Japanese. The Migaku method is a brand new approach to learning kanji that combines the best parts of the previously outlined strategies and fixes all of their major pitfalls. We do this using new technology that allows you to make sure that your kanji and Japanese language knowledge are always tightly connected. This will not only help you to retain both the Japanese and kanji you are learning, but keep your connection and interest in Japanese intact. We've calculated that after one year, in most learner's decks, they will only have around 1000 or even less kanji cards that they cure within their sentence and vocabulary flashcards. This means that there is no major benefit of front-loading so many kanji in the beginning, as only learning a few kanji a day will allow you to continue to learn new kanji alongside vocabulary and sentence cards. What makes this brand new approach possible is our brand new kanji software project that we are releasing jointly with this video. Today I'm here with Ben. He's the lead developer of our new kanji learning tool, the Migaku Kanji God add -on. I know, I know. After seeing all the features, you will probably agree that the name we came up with doesn't accurately convey how great this add-on is, but we like to keep a low profile, so we chose a down-to-earth name for it. The team and I have been hard at work on this new project for some time now, and we feel it's finally in a place where we can release it to you. Let me briefly outline some of its core functionality before Stevie goes on to tell you exactly how you can put it to use to learn kanji using the Migaku method. No matter if you're just starting to learn kanji today, or if you've already been studying kanji for a while. 
The Mingaku Kanji God add-on allows you to learn kanji in any order. The add-on contains a kanji lookup dictionary that not only contains a huge amount of information about nearly 15,000 kanji, but also allows you to add nicely styled recognition or production of kanji flashcards for any kanji you see in the wild during your immersion with just one click. And yes, of course it will also add all component pieces for those kanji first, so that you will always learn all of the simplest components before moving on to the more complex components or kanji. Connect the words you're learning to the kanji you're learning. This new add-on keeps track of every occurrence of every kanji in your Anki flashcard decks and will automatically add any words that appear in your sentence or vocabulary flashcards to the front and back of your kanji cards. The best part is that it shows you the words in the order of how many times they appear in your decks. This gives you a much greater chance at correctly reviewing your kanji cards since you will be able to connect your kanji knowledge to your ever-growing knowledge of Japanese. Choose how many kanji you want to front load. We feel that learning a certain number of kanji at the beginning of your studies is likely very helpful in gaining a familiarity with the kanji writing system. The Kanji God add-on allows you to choose how many kanji you want to learn at the beginning and will automatically add those kanji in an optimal order and will always include all component pieces of a given kanji before showing you the kanji itself. Learn kanji as your study vocabulary and sentences. This add-on can automatically add flashcards for all kanji and all required component pieces that occur in the sentence and vocabulary flashcards that you will be learning, which means that you can study flashcards for the kanji and components you will be seeing on your vocabulary and sentence cards in a short while before you study them. This will give you a greater familiarity with the words that occur in those flashcards since you will already be familiar with the kanji that appear in those words. Easily mark the kanji you already know. If you already know some kanji or have an existing Anki flashcard deck, then you can mark those kanji as known so that the add-on doesn't create cards for those kanji when you ask it to create new kanji cards for you. View all of your kanji knowledge stats in a nicely styled format. You can at any time view the data for your recognition and production kanji cards and the data for all kanji appearing in your sentence and vocabulary flashcards. This allows you to check how many kanji you know in each JRPT level, Kanken level, Japanese school year and more. These six points only scratch the surface of what the Migaku Kanji add-on can do for you. So if you want to know all of what it's capable of, make sure to check that link to its complete user's guide in the description of this video. And more importantly, stay tuned because TV is now going to show you how you can best use this add-on in your studies, no matter your current level of Japanese or Kanji ability. Okay guys, so if you're new to Japanese, we first recommend it to start by learning hiragana and katakana. Once you are ready to move on to kanji, we recommend that you start off by front-loading 50 or so kanji so you can familiarize yourself with how kanji work before beginning your Japanese study. If you're new to Enki, also make sure to check out our Enki beginner's guide linked in the description below. We recommend that you start with 50 recognition cards according to the remembering the kanji or and that you learn 10 to 20 cards per day depending on how much time you have. It may be good to start with just 5 to 10 kanji the first couple of days to slowly ease into the kanji learning process. This way you can start off learning some easier kanji before you dive in with the kanji that are used in your beginner deck. But obviously if you don't feel like doing this step you can start with the kanji contained in your beginner deck right away. To create your deck, just click on the Create Deck button in Anki. It's also probably easier to create two additional decks for recognition and production. After you create them, simply drag and drop them into your main kanji deck to create sub decks. Now you go to the Migaku Kanji Add-ons options. In the tab for recognition and production, just click on the button at the top and select the corresponding deck. To add the first 50 cards in RDK order, simply hover over Migaku and select Add New Kanji Cards. Select Recognition, set the amount to 50 in the drop-down menu below. Select RTK Order and press OK. With this, you're done and can start learning those cards right away. Once you learned these first 50 cards or so, we recommend that you download and install the Migaku version of some publicly available beginner Japanese decks from Anki Web. They are linked in the description below and are 100% freely provided by a third party. 
We are currently working on our own official Mikako beginner deck that greatly improves upon the decks that you will find below and will include grammar education directly within the deck itself. We will change the links out to that of our deck when it is released, so make sure to check the links below because it may have already been released when you are watching this video. Even if our deck is not out at the time you are watching this video, the decks linked below are still great resources that only teach you a single new word per card ensuring a smooth progression of Japanese knowledge. Once you downloaded the deck, you register it for the learn ahead function. To do this, simply go back to the add-on settings. In the recognition tab, press the add button and select the deck from the drop-down menu. Lastly, you can choose the amount of cards that the add-on will always create ahead. That's it. Now you can start. We recommend that for the first few days you continue to only study new kanji flashcards so you can get a head start and already know all the kanji in the first cards of your main deck. Afterwards, just reduce the number of kanji you learn each day and start learning from your main deck as well. So if you're learning 15 cards a day, 5 of them would be kanji cards and 10 sentence cards from your beginner deck. Once you begin learning the sentence cards in this deck, you can periodically update the kanji add-ons database by simply clicking the Refresh Kanji Cards button. This will automatically add the words that contain a particular kanji to your kanji cards, ensuring you have a good idea of how those kanji are being used in the sentences you are studying, and keeping your kanji and Japanese knowledge closely coupled to allow you to form memories in both areas. Once you're done with your beginner deck and you want to start with sentence mining, you can easily keep on learning new kanjis you encounter. We will talk about this in more detail in the Let the Add-on Do All the Work For You section. If you already have some knowledge of kanji but would like to change over to using the Migaku method and the kanji god add-on, <laughs> then you're in luck. Because we've added functionality that makes transitioning over to our system very quick and pretty painless. First of all, if you have a decent knowledge of kanji but haven't studied kanji in Anki flashcards before, then you can use a few different features that our add-on provides to quickly let the add-on know about which kanji you've already studied and already know well. The add-on allows you to easily mark any kanji as known. You can do this by simply going to Migaku Mark Kanji Known. Here you can either paste in text containing the kanji you already know or simply specify which kanji you know from other kanji lists. For example, the Remembering the Kanji books or different JLPT levels. This will load the entire list of kanji that a given database has into the text box, which you can review and remove or add kanji from as you need. Once you complete this step, the add-on will recognize all these kanji as known and will not automatically create cards for them or their component pieces when you create new kanji cards. On the other hand, if you've already been learning kanji using Anki, then you have two ways of importing your kanji knowledge into the kanji god add-ons database. The easiest way to do this is just to convert your existing kanji cards to the Migaku card format. To do this, just go to the card browser and select all the cards you want to convert. Then press Edit, Convert Selected Notes to Migaku Kanji Cards. In the window that pops up, simply select the field that contains the kanji and specify if the card format is for recognition or production cards. If you have fields with custom keywords, stories or mnemonics, you are able to import these as well. After you press OK, all cards will be converted and you can begin learning new kanji cards with our add-on, while having all of your progress maintained. There is also another option for those of you who may not want to convert your existing cards into our note type. In that case, you can simply register those cards as kanji cards and the add-on will record the kanji occurring in those cards as known as well. To do this, open the settings window and go to the recognition or production tab, depending on which kind of kanji cards you want to register with our add-on. Then, in the table at the bottom of the window, you can simply add a filter that will pick up your existing cards like this. Once you've done this, you will have imported your kanji knowledge from your previous kanji deck while keeping their format intact. Regardless of the way you choose to import your kanji knowledge, once you have done so, you have several options on how to continue learning new kanji. If you encounter a new unknown kanji, you can easily look it up in our kanji lookup dictionary, selecting kanji lookup in the Migaku menu. In this window, you can see a host of information about that given kanji, including the words where that kanji is commonly used. 
You also have the option to quickly create a new recognition or production kanji card by clicking the appropriate Create Card button in the lookup window. You are also able to mark a kanji as known without creating a card by shift-clicking these buttons. Another way you can continue to learn new kanji is by having kanji cards automatically created for an existing vocabulary or sentence card deck. First, you will want to open the settings window and register your deck in this table. Simply click Add down below and select the deck, the note type, card type and the field which the add-on should check. This will let the add-on know which fields on which cards you want the add-on to scan for unknown kanji. Then in either the recognition or production tabs or even both tabs, you should check off the second checkbox. This will enable automatic kanji card creation. When enabled, the add-on will now scan all the new cards you add for kanji you haven't learned yet and automatically create kanji cards for them. That way you can simply study new sentences and vocabulary cards as normal and then study the kanji cards that are automatically created for those cards. One final thing is to not forget to periodically refresh our kanji god add-ons database by pressing refresh kanji cards in the Migaku menu. This will ensure that the words shown on your kanji cards are always kept in sync with any new words you are learning in your other flashcards. Well guys, that's it for today. If you want to get started with the Migaku method and the Migaku Kanji God add-on, <laughs> please consider joining us on Patreon at the $5 tier. Our new Kanji add-on is a brand new project and therefore is still in beta and so is currently only available to Migaku supporters. In joining our Patreon you will not only gain access to the Kanji God add-on, <laughs> but also a wide host of our other Migaku projects. For a full rundown on what we offer, please check out our Table of Contents page linked below. The Table of Contents includes information on all our projects, the vast majority of which are already 100% free available to you today. If you want to find out even more about what the Kenji add-on can do, also make sure to check out its guide linked below. As always, thank you so much to everyone who supports our work. We are extremely excited about what's coming up next. <laughs>